So simple interest has several advantages. However, the effective rate drops as time passes. And while this might not seem to be a problem, it makes the mathematics more complicated. So we'll make the mathematics easier by considering a more complicated scenario. So from our formula for the effective interest rate over the nth time period, we can rearrange. If we multiply both sides by a of n minus 1, we get. And we can solve for a of n. Now, if we want the effective interest rate to be the same for all n, we can call it i and get this formula a of n minus 1 times 1 plus i is an example of what mathematicians call a recurrence relation. It expresses the value of a quantity a n in terms of the value of a previous quantity a of n minus 1. It's often easy to write recurrence relations, we just did, but it's hard to work with them. For example, if we wanted to know a of 500, we'd have our recurrence relation a of 500 is a of 499 times 1 plus i. But now we need to know a of 499. Well, we can find that by using our recurrence relation, because a of 499 is a of 498 times 1 plus i. But now we need to find a of 498, so this requires finding a of 498, which is a of 497 times 1 plus i, and so on. And so we say that we want a closed form expression for a of n. In other words, some way we can compute a of n directly without having to find all of the preceding values. So let's start by finding a of 1. Our recurrence relation says that's equal to a of 0 times 1 plus i, but remember we'll always assume a of 0 is equal to 1. So a of 1 will be 1 plus i. Now let's consider a of 2. Our recurrence relation says that's a of 1 times 1 plus i, but we've already figured out what a of 1 is. So a of 2 will be 1 plus i squared. a of 3, well that's a of 2 times 1 plus i. We know what a of 2 is, 1 plus i squared, and so a of 3 is 1 plus i cubed, and a pattern begins to emerge. And so now we'll lather, rinse, repeat, and generalize to find a of n equals 1 plus i to the nth power. And this leads to the compound interest accumulation function. So the compound interest accumulation function for interest rate i is 1 plus i raised to the teeth power. So remember we'll be assuming that our amount function a k t is just going to be the amount invested k times the accumulation function a of t. And so the compound interest formula relates four quantities. The final amount a k t, the principal k, the time t, and the interest rate i, and given any three, we can solve for the fourth. So suppose 500 is deposited for 8 years at compound interest with an annual rate of 3%, and let's compare the final amount to the same amount deposited for the same time at simple interest. We'll use the accumulation function, which tells us how much a dollar would become, then scale it by the $500 investment. We have t equal to 8, i, the interest rate, 3% converted to a decimal, and so we find a of 8, and so 500 would become 500 times 1.03 to the 8th, or about $633.39. In comparison, the accumulation function for simple interest would give us, so $500 would become 620. We could also try to find an interest rate. 
So let's find the interest rate required for a deposit of $200 to grow to 10,000 over 30 years. So as a general rule, Unless otherwise specified, we'll assume that we're dealing with compound interest. We rarely work with simple interest outside of a few basic examples. So our amount function will be, and we know the amount we want, $10,000, and the starting principal, $200. We also know the time, 30 years. So the last thing we do is the first thing we take care of. So over on the right-hand side, we're multiplying by 200. So we'll divide by 200. The right-hand side is a 30th power. So we'll take the 30th root. And then we'll subtract 1 to get the interest rate. We can also try to find an unknown time. Suppose $1,000 is deposited in an account bearing 12% interest compounded annually. How long before this amount triples in value? So we have our amount function where we know the interest rate, 12%, and the principal balance, 1000 And since we want the amount to triple, the final amount is going to be 3 times 1000 or 3000 And so now we can solve for t. We'll divide both sides by 1,000. And since this is an exponential equation, we'll hit both sides with a log and solve. And we find that t is approximately 9.69 years. Or I suppose we want to retire in five years with $500,000. According to this email I just got, a Russian prince offers me a return of 45% per year. So how much should I send the Russian prince? We have A of K of 5 is $500,000. That's the amount after 5 years. The interest rate is 45% and the time is 5. And so we have... And since the right-hand side is K multiplied by a quantity, we can divide both sides by that quantity to get K. And that gives us our value for k. And so I should give this Russian prince, well, probably nothing. If an offer sounds too good to be true, it probably is.